Hassan, welcome. Hello. A big thank you for this wonderful opportunity. So here at the Open Sky House, the residents are waiting in anticipation and um, it's very wonderful you're making yourself available to them. Okay, let's go. Okay, the first one is Radha. Radha. Hey Radha. Hello, nice to meet you. I just read your question, okay? In your interview, you were talking about that many people had awakening realization and lost it again because they are not mature or they have no foundation. I experienced some of these moments very strongly for shorter and longer time and it feels like the door is open but easily slipping from one side of the door to the other side. Can you speak more about what is needed as a preparation for this realization to get permanent and integrated? <laughs> it's a mystery, no? Because you cannot When the, when the happening is happening, or even these moments of very strong insights or silence or bliss or joy, it just happens spontaneously, no? It's not something you do, it just happens. I say no. <laughs> so that is, that is just the grace. So if it happens, it must be already a sign that you are very fortunate that it is happening. But there's nothing to do, it's just to be more and more, if there is anything to do, it's just to be more aware, more and more aware of your habits, negative habits, no? That is taking you down or taking you away from it, just to become more and more aware of the moment. It's it all comes down to just living in the moment and don't carrying any garbage with you, no? That's what it all, all you can do. So slowly, slowly, but if this is happening, then already, for me, it is like when people have an inside or a satori or like this, it's like you, the body or the whole system gets, starts getting prepared. Hmm? So you can have more and more space, because it's strong stuff, no? I mean, how does it happen? You cannot prepare. It's a paradox, because in one way, you have to prepare. You have to do an effort, yeah? From the very beginning, people come totally ignorant. They don't know anything. And then slowly, slowly, they get interested. Then meditation therapy, groups, self-inquiry, whatever is happening, no? And in this way, slowly, slowly, the negative habits loosen its grip on the person. And when the negative loosen, disappear, then you are more and more open for some higher energy. Yeah? So, when this starts happening, it's just it just agrees. It's not really, it's just to become more and more aware. There is, it, it is really a strange business, the business of isness. Because there's nothing you can do and at the same time you have to do something, no? So you have to do things, do, do as much as you can, but don't expect anything. Yeah? So just function more and more like an innocent, empty, 
that you are not in control, but the whole is in control, no? Trust that. Then it will happen. But it has to be, in my own experience, this happens many, many times. It is like you, you existence is preparing this body-mind to receive something that is so vast, no? That is almost, it's shocking. And it can only happen if you disappear out of the way. So the more and more you become a hollow bamboo in your daily life, not carrying anything, not dreaming about anything, just being present, the more and more this can happen. So that, if anything, that is the preparation, which is not really a preparation, it's just to be you. Just be you and be happy. Hmm? Anything else? <laughs> um, right now, not. <laughs> I mean, for me, it feels also like a kind of getting empty or emptying out. Yeah. Yes. Yeah. That's the whole. That's the whole thing because people are afraid of emptying, because who are they if they are empty, no? So this is where the trust, the, the devotion, the surrender, that's where it comes into the picture. So, because people want it, but you, you cannot have it, you have to disappear to get it. Yeah? So, when this is happening more and more, then you get prepared in a way to lose yourself. And when you lose yourself, that means that you lose the false, or your identity, or your ego, then something bigger can come in. Yeah? Then the divine, or consciousness, or call it what one wants, can come in. And when it happens, it's a relief. But the ego is always afraid, the personality is always afraid for that, no? So in these experiences, if people haven't had those experiences, then they are still afraid, no? Because they don't know. So when you get those experiences where you evaporate or disappear or get spacious, that's what I mean, that this is a preparation because then you gain trust. This is how it is. I'm more than what I thought I was. Hmm? So devote yourself to that more, to that emptiness, to that love. <laughs> okay. Okay, thank you. Rajan. Yes. Mm. Rajan, you say, not so many people know about you in Norway, and also here in Germany there is a limited amount of people we can reach with JD's teachings. It is a shame, as true teachings should be more widely available. What can be done? Maybe you are asking the wrong person because this one is doing hardly anything. <laughs> I don't do much. I don't do. Yeah. Effort is not for me at all. And uh, that not so many people know about me in Norway, for me is a total blessing. <laughs> <laughs> Because I have more than enough people. <laughs> All the retreats are full. I never wanted to be famous. They've been trying to publish books for 20 years. I just say, read Osho books, read Papaji books, read Ramana. There's so many beautiful, enlightened people. So, but this is how it is. It is true. It is a shame in one way. I understand what you are saying and what you are asking. Because it should be available, but where, where are the people? You know, the masses 
and it's always been like that. The masses is always unconscious. They are not interested in the truth. And why? Because it will shake them up. Hmm? To come closer to yourself, to know who you are, that means you have to drop the false, no? You have to be willing to look at yourself. And that is painful in the beginning. Because you have to leave the known. And look at the society, look, look where you came from. Yeah, look how the society is, look how it is in Germany, look anywhere in the world. Look in China, look in America, how the masses is. They are all thinking and functioning the same. That's why they crucified Jesus, poisoning Buddha, poisoning Osho. Because they can't stand the truth. It's always been like that. So the truth or this self-exploration has always been for very few people hmm? who want some adventure, who has a longing, yeah? who wants more. Or they have some old memory in their soul that is more to life than just this society 95. Yeah? And those people will always find something. Look, you are there, no, I'm talking to you. So don't think about the other like that, because whoever is supposed to find will find. When I came to Osho, many people of my friends were seekers, nature people, hippies. But when I came back to Norway with the good news that you had a, a live Buddha, they just laughed. They couldn't relate to it. So it's like that. It's very few people. But um, so I have my people around and uh, whoever should come will come and uh, may, you know things are happening but what can be done I don't know because I'm not the doer anymore I just live you know <laughs> why, why disturb the beauty you know? why disturb the beauty I, my <coughs> As long as I've been in this game of a spiritual teacher or a guru or giving satsang, I've been much more reluctant to giving interview, to talk to people, because who understand? No? It has to be some people, if I'm going to be interested to talk to somebody, there has to be somebody who has some longing or who is already out of the box. Hmm? Because otherwise they, you don't understand anyway. And who has that longing, no? Who has that consciousness? Who has that seeking for truth? And th those are the ones I'm looking for, no? Who are hungry. Not these wishy-washy people, no? So it's like that. And John Davy, he's doing good. He's putting out many movies, many films. And that is good because you are sharing. That is also a beautiful way to share, no? But that has not been my way. We are, everybody has a different expressions of the truth, no? I'm just a simple lazy guy. <laughs> but very, very happy. For some reason, only God knows. Snackar du fortsatt norsk? No, hardly. <laughs> I left when I was 15 years old. And yeah, no one back, but everything is functioning in English around me. You have any other questions? Um, no, I just want to share 
this that you are also, I mean, uh, from Norway. Uh, and when I look at you, I don't, I don't, in some way, I don't feel this. Uh, I mean, sometimes when you meet people from your own country, you feel this uh, cultural, uh, something collective. But with you, it's not really, it's not there in your person, but I still feel something deep inside, which is very nice, just about... Mm, something that was missing uh yeah from kind of when i was younger when i grew up uh wi a wise person or wise people who who really knew yeah yes, yes. <laughs> that's why i had to leave also you know and i didn't find it before i came to india and matt what you say wise people no because this memory was in me but uh, I don't see myself as Norwegian, you know. I'm a, it belongs to a different species. Mm. <laughs> I'm, I'm healed. I'm healed of any national or religious or any beliefs or any country or any, anything. It's a, I'm happy I have that passport because it's a very good passport, but that's about it. It's like that. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> but you know yourself, no? with whatever country you are coming from, how many people like you, how many friends is understanding you? No? Yes. So it's like that. If you really want to find yourself, you have to be willing to walk your own way. No? You have to really be willing to seek. It's like that. No? And that, that takes some courage, that takes some intelligence to do that. Most people are safe in this boring society, way of the society, you know, where everybody knows. I know who I am. You and us all, son. Yeah? I'm a taxi driver, yeah? like that. It's very boring. So thank God that you escaped a little bit. Yeah, I did the same as you. I also went to India and um, to Arunachala because of uh, yeah. Ramana Maharshi. Mm. And then uh, there I I read some of John David's books. I was very touched by by his teachings and his meetings with other teachers too. And then some years later, I I ended up here. So. <laughs> And how long you been there? Um, yeah, so I first met John David and the community uh, more maybe four years ago, but I, I moved in uh, about uh, six months ago now. Yeah. Good. Yeah. <laughs> so I haven't been back to Norway for, for some time now, so, but it's, I, I'm also not missing it. So it's, uh, I'm in the right place. <laughs> That, that's the sign. That's the sign. Yeah. Follow your heart. Mm. Hmm? <laughs> Very good. Hello. Hello. Tria, in your interview with John David, you said that you feel impersonal and maybe the wording was a bit different. That touched me strongly. Could you please say more about that? The, the truth is not personal. Hmm? The, tr the truth is impersonal. And I'm a devotee of the truth. And you must be longing for that. That's why you got touched. Hmm? And that's why truth, many times, they say, truth liberates. Have you heard that? Uh, yes, I can't speak. <laughs> I'm too touched. <laughs> 
<laughs> my God, that is my problem. <laughs> they have this saying, truth liberates. Yes? And they also know that truth hurts. And what does it, why does it hurt? Because people live in lies. Yeah? So truth is very shocking for the ordinary people, you know, the sleepy people. It will shake you up. Yeah, so that's what I mean, that when you have found yourself that you are beyond the personal, the personal identity, the games of the ego, then you functioning impersonal, you're functioning in the truth, you're functioning as love. Hmm? So this is very beautiful that this, you understand something in you, you understand that, no? Yes. Most people are very touchy, you know, if you if you talk, everybody is careful what they say, what people think about them, you know, what other people think, how they should behave. The more and more you become real, that will go. But you have to help yourself also to become strong in yourself. Hmm? That doesn't mean that you hurt or go against others. It just means that you are truthful to yourself. You become uniquely you, yourself. No? You're reclaiming yourself. And that is something that is impersonal because you are not just a person. You are much more. So the more you're surrendering to that, the more you allow that, the more you accept who you are, that's what I mean by accepting who you are. It's not, you can never accept the small, the personal, the ego, because it's always in conflict. But you find, when you find the real, then you accept, you surrender, you let go, you embrace it because it's so beautiful. No? And then you have the power, the strength to go beyond the personal. It becomes impersonal. Many times when an enlightened man or woman speaks or teaches, if they are speaking or teaching, people get hurt. The ego gets hurt. Huh? They get misunderstood. People misunderstand them. No? Because they are still stuck in the limited view of the personality, of the personal. That's why it's so important to go beyond that, no? The more you go beyond that, the more free you are. And that's who you really are. Hmm? Freedom itself. Can you accept that, Turiya? Are you still there? Hoo hoo. Yeah. <laughs> well, right now I'm just very, I'm just very present and quiet and uh, there's only this moment and, yeah. <laughs> Hello. Hi. 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 <laughs> there was one Swaha. In the community, we watched the talk you had with John David recently. I was very touched when both of you shared how your personal plans and desire stopped, stepped to the background and a deeper guidance could take over. I felt such a longing to go with this deeper guidance as well. but felt at the same time how something in me was clinging to stuff I identified with and believe 
to bring me joy or security. Could you speak, please speak about that? Much love, Kamala. Hmm. This, every seeker has to go through. Exactly this. Because first, everybody lives in this identity and belief systems that we think will bring us joy, fulfillment. Huh? That's how the society works. You grow up, you get a nice education, then you get a nice job, you get a lot of money, you get successful, or you get beautiful, you get famous, you get rich, then you get married with a handsome prince, then you get children, and so it goes. Yeah? That is the dream. But when you look around, and it doesn't take much intelligence to see that nobody is really happy. So what went wrong? No? And for me, what really went wrong in this, and we have never been so materialistic as today. That means we have never been so lost as today. But then it also creates a bigger opportunity to wake up. Hmm? So now you can find everything, you can find the sacred also, if you are a seeker, which is your part. So now you are split in this, the old conditioning, or the belief of what will bring me joy, like you say, no? So then it's af afraid, because you are going into the unknown, yeah? You don't know what you will get, but you know what you had, you know what you are having. Yeah, you follow. Yeah. So, then, you felt the great longing to go with this deeper guidance as well. Yes. So this is your higher self, no, your true self, your heart. That is longing to come back. I want to come back to that peace. I want to come back to myself, to the true self. I don't want to get lost in those dreams. I can start seeing that they are dreams. So you have to trust your heart, because everything else is just your mental conditioning, you know? From society, from teacher, from parents. And you, everyone has to be strong enough to go beyond that. Hmm? You have to see things as they are. Real happiness is in you, it's not somewhere in the future, it's not somewhere outside you. And in, in the West and in Europe, in America, it's so unknown and still is. The society is very far from it. And in the old East, and religions in the India, in China, in Japan, in Thailand, in Himalayas, they appreciated this. They even support the children to go meditate, to go to the monasteries. Because they knew the value of it, no? Who is doing that in the West? So this has to come from inside and in my own life and including myself, I always had that longing and that's why I was so happy when I met my master, no? Because I found something that I was longing for. And we have to find it in the society. So, as long as one is holding on to these dreams or fantasies in the outside that can bring me joy or security, Life is not about security. Not at all. 
you, <laughs> you have to get used to insecurity. Hmm? Because who is afraid of insecurity anyway? That can come any moment. Hmm? You can have an accident today. Anything can happen, anything can stop now for anybody. And it doesn't matter if it happens now or if it happens in 50 years. What matters is to live totally now. And the more totally you live now, and coming back to your own reality, the more beautiful you will die. Otherwise, the whole life is a waste. Living, believing something to bring me joy and security. What is the security? A prison. Isn't it more beautiful to be free outside? In the mountains? In the jungle? On the path? To live? Isn't that more exciting? To take a risk? So do that. <laughs> Hmm? Do you feel insecurity? What? Do you feel insecurity? No. <laughs> Come on. <laughs> no. <laughs> Not even that much. Totally, totally gone. What could it be? Insecure about what? There has to be somebody who is in insecure. I don't find that somebody anymore. <laughs> <laughs> the, <laughs> you say, come on. No, I don't want to come on. I'm free of that. I'm free of that disease. Hmm? And that's why more ordinary people, they don't, they cannot afford to listen or trust a mystic or an enlightened one because it's, it's too much. It's not possible like that. Come on. When Jesus says, come, follow me, then the ego will think, follow you? Why follow you? <laughs> that is the biggest egoistic thing anybody can say. Why follow you? Who are you? So it's only those people who have this flame, this longing that you are touching here. You, I have felt the longing to go with this deeper guidance as well. But felt at the same time how something in me was clinging to stuff I identify with and I believe to bring me joy or security. Hmm? So, this is the, when you have that longing, that means when you have that spark, only those who are ready to lose everything can go with the Jesus, the Buddha. Hmm? Because they have something deeper has been touched. It's like you have dreams about finding some coins in the street and getting rich and every, every day the beggars is looking in the street for some, maybe they find little coins. But if you have found the whole gold mine, a whole gold mine, you have so much money, so much gold, that you will never need to think about money, then you don't look for that in the street. That is gone. That was in the past. And when you come home, that means becoming one with existence or accepting your true self. Then where's the insecurity? Your home. The most secure home that can ever be. That is your longing, and you know it. 
And that's beautiful. Follow that. Hmm? Don't look for those dirty coins in the street. Look for the real diamond, hmm? and which is in you. You say, some days ago, after deep meditation, I fell in a wonderful emptiness and felt very much at home inside. John David said, you had definitely found the jewels. How can I embrace and save them, not to forget them? What can I do or let go of? My question is a little um, similar to the questions Radha asked you, and mm. uh, your answer uh, touched me very much. And, yes. and there's a deep yes inside of me. Yes, but that's all what you need. Hmm? And now you are at a stage of your life that don't do much. Just let go. It's n it, there is nothing to do. There, there, is no, there is nothing to do. No effort should be finished because, yes, on this part we have to do. But I feel like you are finished with that. You have that understanding. You have felt that emptiness, which is home, which I call home, which is yourself. And how do that happen? No? It happens spontaneously, when you relax, when you let go. So, if anything, let go, relax. You gave me a wonderful sentence some minutes ago. Do your best as you can, uh, but don't expect anything. It's wonderful and very <laughs> relaxing. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Mm. But <clears throat> to some people, I say they must use all the effort because they are very stuck. But for you, I feel like it's just to let go because you have already felt that. And it, 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 doesn't, yeah. it doesn't happen through doing. It doesn't happen mm -hmm. through effort. But then again, but then again it, does, it doesn't happen through effort either. Is beyond both, no? But this comes by living. By living, yeah, I see. And when you, if this really, if this really becomes, you take it into your heart that there is nothing. It's just to relax. So then, that that relaxation, that let go, will just settle you more and more in. And whenever you have the opportunity, it's like you say. How can I embrace and save them, not to forget them? If you, if you have something that you really, really adore, that you really love, that you really appreciate, that is so special, you don't forget it. Yeah, I see. Only people forget it because they don't embrace it. But if you really value, if you know the value of it, if you know the value of love, of truth, of this bliss, then you embrace it and you don't forget it because that becomes first on the list. That's what you want and you know that now. So rest in that. If anything, relax, let go, enjoy, be playful like this. What a wonderful life. <laughs> Thank you so much. <laughs> Thank you so much. <laughs> My question is not important. <laughs> Your question is not important? No, it's more um, just to sit with you. 
that is good because it was it's more a mental question. Yeah. And now you have gone beyond that because you already start falling in tune. Mm -hmm. hmm? But I like to say something. You can just sit in silence, but I like to say something about it because you ask about uh, the psychedelics or ayahuasca and peyote and awakening and things like this, and I'm living in a shamanic country. This is... Um, this has always been interested for, it's interesting for people, no? That's why all drugs in the whole history of humans, people have always been attracted to drugs, to alcohol, to anything to take them away from themselves. And these things, it can be helpful at one stage of the journey, yeah? Because some of these ayahuasca, peyote, LSD, magic mushrooms, they can give you a sense of the universal. You lose your ego, your ego consciousness. You become part of existence. I tried it myself, so that's why I'm, I'm speaking from my own experience. But this was when I was a teenager. No? I started very early in this life. Hmm? But you will never find it. Nobody ever found themselves or enlightenment through drugs. So that's the other side. And people now is very... In, Bra in Brazil, they even have a religion with ayahuasca. And you must have heard, since you are asking this question, that it's, it's very popular in some circles. Ayahuasca, peyote, ecstasy, yeah? Because this is mostly also for the young people, because one part of life, then you are seeking, you are still rebellious, you want something more, and you want to get out of the normal society. Hmm? But these drugs will never give you the truth. It can be a wake-up call that it is something more you follow. That is something more to life. But that more you will only find through meditation and love. It will never deliver the goods. Then people get, they get dependent on the alcohol, on the drug, on the ayahuasca. But that is not real, no? The real is already there. It's no... You don't need to go any, anywhere, you don't need to take anything to find it, because it's there. But maybe it's an effort to come back to it, because we have been so identified with the false, with the mind. And it's the mind that is interested in the drugs. So leave the mind, leave the drugs, and be at peace, be happy. Mm, the strongest, the strongest drug you can ever find is in you. You don't need to take anything from the outside. You find that and be happy. Mm? Anything you like to ask now? No. no. <laughs> Thank you. Hello. Hello. Saswati, you ask how can I become the right host for the divine energy? Oh, 
Well, a musician playing music is already a great part because it's playful. You create something, no? And life for me is pure delight, it's energy, no? Life is energy, it's a flow. Music is a flow also, no? It has to flow. So the more you become a flow, not stagnant, the more you are available for that divine energy. You just have to get out of your own way. More and more you get out of the old, no? Be more creative, more open, take more chances. Like this, give you more space. So, the more you are as an ego, personality, identity, the more you will hold yourself back. The more you open up, the more you are in the flow, the more alive, the more acceptance, the more playful, the more innocent, the more the Divine can fill you. Hmm? So this is the difference. So many people, they live just like this, like a tight fist. You have to learn, everybody should learn how to do this, no? Only when you do this, then you can receive. Hmm? Then you can do like this also. Hmm? Receive, no? You have to be open. So this is the thing that you have to be aware of your negative tendency that pulling you down, the lower powers, because in life you have lower powers and you have higher powers. No? And as a seeker, you long to go higher, to get lifted up, yeah? to be open for the divine energy. Yeah? So the more you leave the negative, it's the same for everybody. The more conscious you will become, the more you will leave the negative tendency, the bad habits. Huh? Then you find new things. You're opening up for the higher. So if people are always a slave of the habits, of the negative, then they can never open up to the divine. That's why it's so important to leave the past, no? All the mystics say that, no? Live in the moment. Leave the past. Become reborn. That is what I mean, being in the flow. You become one with it. So, it's just to be aware what is pulling me down and don't go there. And what helps me to open. But to open is also scary because when you open, you disappear. Yeah? So, get used to disappearing, get used to being in the flow. And music is a beautiful way. Music, dance, meditation, making food, anybody, anything to do. We have to find what is beautiful for each one, no? what comes natural. And then let that life become more and more beautiful, no? more and more creative. Hmm? So, how can I become the right host for the divine energy? Hmm? That comes by itself, is just to stop the negative tendency and have faith that you are following your heart, you are following the good. It's something bigger than us that is functioning, surrender to that. Hmm? The Divine is already there. Sagar. Hello. Hello. Oh, yeah. Hmm. 
you write in the retreats and satsang meetings, it's easy to be in the silent space. In daily life and working, it's much more difficult to be in the silent space. How can intuition be more invited in to the daily life and how to trust it? Hmm. By living, just by living. Hmm? It is steps or levels, because in the beginning everybody comes ignorant. No? When they start the journey, they want to learn, they want to grow, they want to find peace. They want to be centered. They want to come back to themselves. Hmm? So that is a journey. First, one has to have a taste of this space. Hmm? Which, why satsang is so precious. Why being with a, a master is so precious. Because then, for the first time, you get the taste of that. Yeah. So already, you are very fortunate because we already have that taste of that silence, of that balance. Yes, then it's also true that that comes from the source, yeah? from one who has awakened. You can feel that. And that's why it's so important to get more and more in tune with that. So you can get established in that Silence in that peace and in daily life and working is much more difficult to be in the silent space. Of course, because in the working, whatever you do and what you do in your life? Mostly office work, work with finances. Yes. So that is very mental, no? You use very much the mental. Yes. And then you are together with many, many people who are super mental. Huh? There's many things that can, be ha can influence one, you know. But one is that it's still very new, this space. is very fragile, no? So that has to be taken care of. So it's very important then, and it's a great blessing to have other people who are interested in the same, to have a community, to have a Sangha, to have meditation. So you get the balance of that. And it's also very helpful if you more and more can maybe find work in a way that you do what you do, but work more by yourself, so you're not so much influenced. Because the more sensitive one gets, the more you feel also the other people, not only yourself. So the, the journey has many stages. Of course, everybody is unique, but that's how it is. First one is unconscious. Then you start getting a feeling, wow, it's something here, no? It's beautiful silence. I feel so at ease. And then you lose it again. Hmm? So everybody has a responsibility as a seeker of truth to look also, can I change my life? Hmm? Because for many people, they just found themselves in any kind of work. It's not a conscious choice. Yeah? Even so that many, because of the education, because of the family, because of your own fantasies, whatever it is. So now it's also a question to ask yourself, is this what I really want to do? Hmm? You have to investigate yourself also, be very truthful with yourself. Because it's not, it's a, it demands that you live in a harmonious way, no? The inner and the outer should really be the same. In the beginning, it's only the outer. Then you start feeling the inner. That's why everybody says it's important to come in, yeah? But when you have a true balance, then inner and outer is the same. And that's what you are longing for. Hmm? That 
you go into the world and do whatever work you are doing and you still have that space. Yeah? But that just comes by patience, by taking care of that space, by meditating, by being relaxed, by being happy, by being true, you know? Then you have that, that it is there everywhere, but still it is fragile. So that's why people lose it. It's not, it's not integrated in you. It's like you, you're carrying a lot of the past of yourself in the back, no? And the new is very new. So it's important to take care of it. <clears throat> but it's totally possible. That's what, the way you are going. How can intuition be more invited in daily life and how to trust it? This has to do also with just, I told you that you have to look at your own life to trust yourself. To trust yourself that you are doing the right thing. If you feel like, wow, I'm doing the right thing, great. Then you go deeper into that. Maybe you can change your workspace, maybe you can work from home, maybe you can do something else, maybe, you, you know, anything is available. The, the life is open. Mm -hmm. And growth, growth, it means change. Definitely means change. And most people are afraid of change. Hmm? Most people want security. Yeah, me too. <laughs> <laughs> But life is not about, real life is not about that. It is about living spontaneously, alert, moment to moment. Of course, it is an art, because everybody has to work. Everybody has to do things in life. No? Everybody has their own responsibilities. But you have to ask yourself, what is really true for you, you know? then you will trust it and use your intuition. How can intuition be more invited in daily life and how to trust it? By being truthful to yourself, by taking chances, by asking yourself, is this really what I want? Is this really true? Is this really how I feel? Or am I just reacting in out of habits? Or, or out of what people expect from me, yeah? You have to become more and more truthful to yourself. And that intuition you have, but the, on everybody you have all these layers of conditioning on top of it. And that's what the growth means, you have to get those away. So your true intuition, your true trust, your true clarity can come up to the surface. Hmm? That only you can do. And it's great. Are you ready? <laughs> Try my best, yes, yes. I mean, it's... Um, this what you say, this trusting myself and... Um, yeah, tuned in to myself and stay, stay with stay with that this is i think um an important point yeah which is difficult for me yeah or i didn't do it so much yeah this is um that's it is is the same for everybody and it's very true what you say it's difficult for you because you haven't done it so much yeah so be patience and be dedicated to it if you want if you start if you remember how it was when you were a little boy and you started bicycling on the first time, it was not easy, yeah? Mm -hmm. Very difficult. Then you fall and then, oh, my elbow, oh, ah. And then very soon you know it. Then you go, yeah? <laughs> so it's like that. If it's something you want, then you can do it. And the doors are open. Hmm? And that is what satsang and a the teacher and a guru and a master and a guide is showing you that it's possible, you know. I have done it. Why can't you? You have to trust yourself. 
You have to be courageous. You have to be very, very truthful to yourself. Yeah? That's what it comes all down to. And then this intuition will become stronger and stronger. Then you will feel it. No, I'm not doing that because it's that I did that out of habit. No, I'm not the slave of my habit. I can feel it. I can see it. You get more distance to how your habit functions. Yeah? So be, be patient. Take care of yourself. And don't take it seriously. Yeah? Yeah? <laughs> Good luck. What, what would the commune be without the cook? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Just a lot of hungry people. Yeah, I tell you. <laughs> ah. Lunch and dinner. <laughs> I, I can imagine they eat a lot there, no? <laughs> <laughs> yes. But it's also nice for a cook if they eat. If they don't eat, it's also not nice. Yeah, it's not nice if they know. <laughs> yeah. Mm. You ask which role plays the personality once people get after self realization? Has the realization an influence on your personality? Can you please? Tell something about that. Thankfully, Pavati. The personality, ordinary, the personality means that you are fake. Because a persona means, in all Greek, the mask. So personality means a mask. Yeah? And when you if that self-realization happens, it means that all mask goes. Hmm? You, that, that's the sen sense saying that you find your original face. Yeah, your true face. You have no more mask. You are just here. Here I am. Hmm? Here I am. Like that. So, has the realization an influence on your personality? Definitely have an influence. It wipes it away. But still, you have a body. You have a past. So, everybody, if they are self-realized or enlightened, they still have a kind of personality, but they are not identified with it. Be yeah? That is the difference. Like, like Ramana Mahasi, he would never eat meat, no? A cow. He loved Lakshmi the cow, no? The cow even got enlightened in his hands when he died, no? He would never eat the meat. In South India, you don't eat the meat, no? But a man like Gurdjieff, he ate meat, no? Also enlightened being. So that was his past, his upbringing, no? So it depends where you come, you have some traits. And these days. So, but that is not their personality, you know. They are not identified with it, but they have a kind of, they have a form. As long as you have a form, you have to have a name to call you, but they are free of it. Ordinary, that personality for people, most people, is very limited. You are stuck in this personality. I'm so-so, this is my beliefs. Yeah? 
so people cannot really meet because the personality is all different. And not only that, but the personality changes. In the morning you are like that, and in the afternoon you are like this, and in the evening you are different, no? So it's different kind of personality. So people are all mixed up. When you have, if you become self-realized, then you find that center that never changes. It's, it is there. So whatever is changing on the outside, be that name or body or image or place you are, that inside, that center is always the same. That is the difference. On the outside it's all the same. But on the inner realization everything is different. Like before, before self-realization, it was just chaos. After self-realization, it's just clarity, peace. So it's like that. Mm -hmm. But the personality might carry some things, no? Like Papaji, he loved these Indian sweets. Sometimes I, I, I was eating so much Indian sweet, barfi and ladu and things that I got all, oh my God, I can't. But that was his habit, no? Like, I like ice cream and coffee. What can I do? I understand. Oh. You understand, no? It's like that. It's every, every, everything becomes playful, no? And no ordinary, what you are used to in the society, in the world, is that personality becomes very stuck, no? That person is like this. This person is like that. When you are self-realized, you can never say that. You can never say because you, d you don't know yourself how you would be next moment. You are flowing. So mo nobody can say that, oh, this one is like this or he is like that. No, you cannot. Because you don't know yourself. I don't know myself. And it's great. <laughs> it's called security. <laughs> <laughs> security in the insecurity. Hmm? So, so it's like that. Thank you. Separate <coughs> personality is more like you become a person, or. And that person, that is separated from the whole, no? Or I am separated from you, yeah? That is a person, no? But when you realize yourself and you open up to your true essence, then this separation is gone. Because that separation is mental in that person. In the heart, in love, we meet, no? But the head is very difficult to meet my beliefs and your beliefs. But in the heart, we become one, no? We meet like human beings. That's why, it's so imp that's why it's so important to come from the head to the heart. Hey, Lily. Hello. <laughs> Do you see yourself as a teacher? And how do you deal with it in, if your student starts depending on you? No, I don't see myself as a teacher. When you ask that, it's almost like I'm trying to think, how do I see myself? I really, I don't, I don't know how I see myself because 
I feel myself that if anything, it's just the sharing that is happening. And I have no teaching as such because with the master or a guide or a guru is more the intimacy that is, is the person himself. I am the teaching. I don't have any teaching that I can give or any rules. It is like you are you are, share, you are sharing something. I'm sharing something that I have found. No? And that something is so beautiful, so wonderful, so silent, so blissful, so joyous, that it wants to share itself. Hmm? I surrender to that. And then, th that's how I see it. And then, people who are attracted to that beauty, who are attracted to that love, who are attracted to that silence, they will come. Hmm? They come around. I never said I have anything to teach. In fact, I try to escape many times, but no, I surrender. If this is what's happening, so be it. So you are, you are maybe new, Lily, but this is how it is. And you say, how do you deal with it if your student starts depending on you? <clears throat> and this is also something because you are afraid, because you think you are free, that you become dependent on somebody, or become dependent on the teacher or, or the guru. But isn't it, if anything, isn't it much better to do, be dependent on the real than to be dependent on the false? Most people are dependent and attached to the false things, to the image, to money, to country, to belief systems, to any religions. They are dependent to alcohol, to drugs. Hmm? Papaji said many times, there is one It's, it's fine to be dependent if you are dependent on the truth, on love, on freedom. In fact, that is the last, that is the last attachment. And in my own experience, you get attached. You will get attached. You get attached to the master, to the guru, because it's so beautiful. But that is the last attachment because it's the beyond everything else. It's so good that you, can, you are willing to leave everything else for the truth, for that love. And nothing is more beautiful than to be, come back to yourself. So, of course, you will be attached in a way. That's why people love to go to satsang. They love the truth. They love to be around and enlightened ones because it's something in the air. It's some fragrance they don't find anywhere else. But in reality, the master just wants to be a mirror. He wants to remind you that you have it. But to find that in you, maybe you have to go through that. Hmm? You cannot listen to your own heart, your own soul. So you have to have somebody outside you to tell you how it is. Then when your heart ignites, then you become so happy. And then you say, like this, thank you, thank you. 
so beautiful. Thank you, thank you, Master, you say. Then they are so happy, then tears are coming, then so beautiful. Hmm? Because something gets reignited in you, this longing. That always has to happen. And then slowly, slowly you go deeper. And self-realization means that now you have found it in you. But it was the Master who showed you that. Without the Master you couldn't see it. You couldn't have found it. So that's why you're always grateful to the Guru. Hmm? And people who are not, they have never found that. That gratitude never goes away. Because it goes beyond any words. It's this, it's this silent of the heart, of gratitude itself. Then you say, oh my God, was it worth to be attached? So don't be afraid or be attached to love itself. Because if you really love, you become it. Did you understand, Lily? Yes. <laughs> you have anything to say? I was just feeling all the time your light and your presence, and I'm really thankful for that. And you are a wonderful mirror, and here in this community there are a lot of wonderful mirrors. And yeah, so we just see yeah. each other, so you cannot be really attached. <laughs> And the, the guru in India, what the guru really means, which they never had in the West, is one who dispels darkness, no? who brings light. And if you have felt that, that your darkness disappear, you will always be grateful and you want to come closer to that light. It has nothing to do with something, it's your inner, it's your inner longing. No? It's your inner longing that takes you to the teacher, to take you to the master, to take you to the guru. Hmm? So follow your heart and you will be happy. Hmm? Be courageous. <laughs> okay, hi Om. So thank you very much, Vasant, on behalf of all the guys here. As you can see, I'm very lucky to have a wonderful crowd of guys around me and girls around me. And uh, I keep, I got a strong uh, whip, you know, I whip them. <laughs> <laughs> Probably your place is a bit different as you're so laid back, but in our case we live in Germany, you know, and they appreciate hard work. I know, I know. I can do it, you know, because I was into martial arts before, but it's not needed so much anymore. But whatever is needed, no? Yeah, yeah. yeah. We have a great time. Too. We have a lot of fun too, you know, we have a lot of fun too. We play hard and nice. work hard. <laughs> Nice to see you again. Yes, thank you. Thank you. Hari Om. Jai Bhagwan, Jai Papaji, Jai Osho. Ah.